Hi, I'm Kirk Lohr, Family and Consumer Science Educator with Ohio State University Extension. Today, I'm going to show you how to keep your packed lunches safe. You know, every day that we take a packed lunch with us to school or to work, it sets out until we eat it. While it's setting out, it's at room temperature. At room temperature is a perfect range, temperature range, at which bacteria can grow and multiply and produce toxins. When we eat those toxins, it can make us very sick. That's called food poisoning. So we need to do things that will help keep our food safe for us to eat so we don't get food poisoning. And there are two things that you can do. The first thing you can do is to choose foods that are shelf stable at room temperature. Things that are safe at room temperature can go in these brown paper bags that we're all familiar with. The brown paper bag sides are very thin and they don't have any insulating abilities. So that's why the foods that are shelf stable can go in them and be safe. Things like commercially prepared fruits, or applesauce, commercially packaged puddings, pieces of whole fruit, peanut butter and jelly, crackers, or even yogurt can be safe for the couple of hours that it's in room temperature until we eat it, and hard pieces of cheese. So these are all items that are safe to be left out at room temperature in our regular brown paper bag. But that would be boring if we ate shelf-stable foods all of the time. So we need to have a plan to keep cold foods cold and hot foods hot. The way that we can do that is by packing them in insulated containers. So rigid side insulated containers keep the foods colder longer than the soft-sided containers do. That's the main difference between them. In the insulated container, you're going to want to put your things like your leftover meat, maybe hard-boiled eggs, homemade applesauce, and you can even put your juice in a bottle like this that would be in the freezer and then it could be part of the ice pack that you include in your container. You also want to use ice packs. Ice packs that have been in the freezer, you put them on top of the other food items because the cold air goes down and they will work to keep your cold food cold. Other ways for keeping your cold foods cold, like your sliced up vegetables, is to use foods that have already been frozen. So maybe you've frozen some of your leftover soup. You can put it right in there, straight from the freezer. Cut up fruit that's already frozen can go right in there. And a juice box that you've frozen. All of these frozen items will work as ice packs. And as you put them on top, they'll thaw, and they'll keep the other foods that need to be kept cold, cold on the bottom. Another way of keeping your cold foods cold is to freeze your sandwiches. Now, not all sandwiches freeze well, but meat and cheese sandwiches do. This is a good way of getting your children involved in the kitchen with you and preparing foods. So today, I'm going to show you how to make a meat and cheese sandwich that you can put in the freezer. So I'm starting with two pieces of 100% whole grain bread. And I'm going to put a little bit of reduced fat margarine on each side. I'm using reduced fat margarine instead of a mayonnaise or a salad dressing because it freezes well. Mayonnaises and salad dressings do not freeze well. This little bit of low fat spread will also help keep the pieces of bread from getting soggy when you take them out of the freezer. So we're going to add our piece of cheese, we're going to add our pieces of meat, and we're going to put the top on. And with your kids helping you, you can use fun cookie cutter shapes that will help the sandwich be a little more appealing to your young ones. So you put the cookie cutter on and you press down firmly, wiggle it around a bit, and the cookie cutter shape makes the sandwich into this shape. When you have your kids helping you do this, you could have an assembly line and make a week's worth of sandwiches that you put in freezer bags and then have in your freezer so that they're ready in the morning when it's time to quickly put your packed lunch together. Now having frozen foods that are going to be thawed out by the time that you eat them or even soups that might not be completely thawed out by the time you're ready to eat them is good when you have a microwave. 
but we don't always have access to a microwave. So there are other containers that we can use to keep some of those hot foods hot. Insulated thermos jars like these are good for holding soups, casseroles, or even oatmeal. So all of these are a variety of shapes and sizes that work to keep your hot foods hot. We also have thermos bottles that we typically put liquids in. Those work great for cream soups like tomato soup or spinach soup, potato soup. But the difference between an insulated bottle and the non-insulated bottles is that this is safe for hot foods and these are not. These will not keep the hot liquids hot enough even if you did put them in an insulated bag. So it's important to keep them inside of the insulated containers. The last thing you want to do when you're packing your lunch is considering including a little note of encouragement or even a love note. It's a great way to use your leftover cards. You can take off the front and write on the inside that note of encouragement or that note of love and tuck it inside of the appropriate bag that you pack the lunch in. One that's going to keep your hot foods hot and your cold foods cold or one that's appropriate for your shelf stable foods. So today, I've shown you a few ways and ideas for keeping your hot foods hot, your cold foods cold, so you and your loved ones don't get sick from food poisoning.